They did satellite imagery and they realized, oh my God, that's the caldera of a volcano. In a dramatic turn of events, Iceland is grappling with a massive volcanic eruption that has forced the evacuation of thousands. As lava spews and ash clouds rise, the town of Grindavik finds itself in the crosshairs of nature's fury, with over 1,400 earthquakes in just 24 hours signaling the eruption. How will this crisis unfold? Join us as we explore the heart of this catastrophe, exploring the impact, the scientific insights, and the resilient spirit of the Icelandic people in the face of this ongoing disaster. The early signs of the eruption were impossible to ignore. Iceland's Reykjanes Peninsula experienced a staggering 1,400 earthquakes in just 24 hours, a clear indication of the impending volcanic activity. These tremors were monitored closely by the Icelandic Meteorological Office, IMO, which reported that the seismic activity was due to the movement of magma beneath the Earth's crust. This intense activity was a precursor to what was about to unfold. On March 16th, 2024, at precisely 8.23 p.m. local time, a fissure nearly three kilometers long opened on the Reykjans Peninsula. This event marked the beginning of a significant volcanic eruption. The fissure appeared in a location similar to previous eruptions earlier in the year, making it a familiar yet daunting sight for the residents of Grindavik and surrounding areas. Within 30 minutes, hundreds of people, including those at the Blue Lagoon, were evacuated thanks to swift action from emergency services. The eruption's timeline is both dramatic and instructive. As the fissure opened, molten lava began to flow, creating a river of fiery rock heading toward Grindavik. This eruption was characterized as effusive, meaning the lava flowed smoothly and steadily rather than explosively. This type of eruption tends to emit minimal ash, but can still cause significant damage due to the volume of lava. The lava flow was initially very fast, moving in two primary directions toward the south and the west. Despite human-constructed barriers of earth and rock to divert the lava, it reached critical infrastructure, including roads and water pipes. Officials were particularly concerned that if the lava reached the coast, it could cool rapidly upon contacting the water, potentially producing hazardous hydrogen chloride gas. Thankfully, the flow stopped short of the coastline, avoiding this additional hazard. The immediate impact of the eruption was severe and widespread. Roads were covered with lava, making transportation nearly impossible in certain areas. The town's water supply was disrupted when the lava destroyed a key pipeline, leading to about four days without heating and hot water for the affected town. The residents who had been evacuated watched helplessly as the lava approached their homes, with several houses on the edge of Grindavik catching fire and being destroyed. The destruction extended beyond just physical infrastructure. The continuous seismic activity widened cracks in the ground, causing further damage to buildings. One resident described how his bulldozer's windshield cracked from the intense heat as he tried to salvage his vehicle. The overall damage was extensive, and it will be months before the full extent can be assessed and even longer before recovery efforts can restore normalcy. In spite of the initial slowdown of the lava flow, the ground beneath Grindavik remains unstable. Continuous seismic activity indicates that magma is still moving beneath the surface, posing a threat of further eruptions. Scientists have warned that the danger is far from over, with the potential for additional volcanic events in the near future. This ongoing activity has left the community in a state of uncertainty as they face both the immediate challenges and the long-term recovery process. As the eruption progresses, experts from the IMO and other geological organizations continue to monitor the situation closely. The primary concern remains the stability of the ground 
and the potential for future eruptions. The resilience of the Icelandic people will undoubtedly be tested as they navigate the aftermath of this catastrophic event. The current crisis is a stark reminder of the volatile nature of Iceland's geological landscape. As we explore the impact of this eruption, it's essential to understand how similar events have shaped the country's history and the responses that have been implemented to mitigate their effects. Stay with us as we explore other significant eruptions that have tested the resilience and ingenuity of the Icelandic people. The eruption on March 16, 2024, demanded immediate action from Icelandic authorities. With over 1,400 earthquakes shaking the Reykjanes Peninsula in just 24 hours, it was clear that the situation was dire. The Icelandic Meteorological Office, IMO and Civil Protection Department had already been on high alert, ready to execute evacuation plans. The efficiency of this operation was a reflection to the preparedness and coordination of emergency services. The evacuation was a complex and well-orchestrated process. Police, fire departments, and emergency medical services worked together seamlessly. Visuals from the scene depicted a somber yet orderly evacuation. Residents were seen packing essentials, guiding children and pets to safety, while emergency vehicles with flashing lights navigated the streets. The calm demeanor of the authorities helped maintain order amid the chaos, ensuring that the evacuation proceeded without major incidents. As the evacuation unfolded, the human stories began to surface, each one a reflection to resilience and bravery. The human aspect of this disaster cannot be overstated. Jonas Einarsson, a resident of Grindavik, shared his harrowing experience. We had minutes to leave. The ground was shaking and the air was thick with ash. I grabbed what I could and ran. Jonas's story is just one of many that relevance the urgency and fear that gripped the town. Maria Gudmundsdottir recounted the emotional turmoil of leaving her ancestral home. We've lived here for generations. Watching our home, our memories at risk, it's heartbreaking, but we had no choice but to leave. The uncertainty of whether they would have homes to return to was a common theme among the evacuees. Emergency shelters were quickly set up in nearby towns to accommodate the displaced residents. These shelters provided not just physical refuge, but also emotional support. Volunteers and aid workers were on hand to offer food, blankets, and a listening ear. Against the dire circumstances, the community's solidarity shone through as people came together to help one another. While local efforts were commendable, the eruption also drew significant international attention and aid. The eruption did not go unnoticed by the global community. News outlets worldwide broadcast the dramatic events unfolding in Iceland, prompting a wave of international support. Countries from across Europe and beyond extended their hands, providing financial aid, supplies and expertise to assist in managing the crisis. Visuals of international aid arriving in Iceland were widespread. Cargo planes loaded with emergency supplies and medical equipment landed at Keflavik International Airport. The European Union's civil protection mechanism played a significant role in coordinating these efforts, ensuring that the aid was effectively distributed where it was needed most. International geological experts joined forces with local scientists to monitor the volcanic activity and predict future eruptions. This collaboration was crucial for both immediate response and long-term planning. The combined expertise helped in understanding the eruption's dynamics and potential threats, aiding in the efficient management of the crisis. One notable contribution was from the United States Geological Survey, USGS, which provided satellite imagery and data analysis. This information was instrumental in mapping the lava flow and assessing the damage, which in turn 
guided the evacuation and response strategies. The international community's response was swift and robust, but the resilience and unity of the local population were equally critical in navigating the disaster. The overwhelming support from around the world underscored the importance of global cooperation in times of crisis. Iceland's response to this eruption also drew on lessons learned from similar past events. To fully understand the significance of these efforts, we need to look back at other major volcanic eruptions and the responses they elicited. How have past experiences shaped the current strategies? Iceland's unique geological setting on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge makes it a hotspot for volcanic activity. This ridge is a tectonic plate boundary between the Eurasian and North American plates. As these plates diverge, magma rises from the mantle to fill the gap, resulting in frequent volcanic eruptions. The Reykjanes Peninsula, where the current eruption is occurring, is particularly active due to this tectonic setting. The volcanic activity in this region is not new. Recent eruptions in Fagradalsfjall, 2021 and 2022, and Litli-Hrutur, 2023, have provided valuable data on the geological processes at play. The Fagradalsfjall eruptions, characterized by their accessibility and spectacular visuals, drew significant tourist interest and scientific study. The current eruption near Grindavik is part of this ongoing volcanic activity cycle on the Reykjanes Peninsula. Understanding the geological background is important, but what do the experts say about this specific eruption and its future risks? Geologists and volcanologists have been closely monitoring the current eruption. Benedict Gunnar Ofigson from the Icelandic Meteorological Office explained that the magma responsible for the eruption originates from a depth of approximately 15 kilometers. This depth provides significant insights into the composition of the Earth's mantle and the inner workings of tectonic activities. Experts emphasize that the movement of magma beneath the surface is a critical factor in predicting future eruptions. The seismic activity leading up to the eruption indicated that magma was moving towards the surface, creating pressure that eventually led to the fissure opening. This ongoing movement suggests that there could be more eruptions in the near future. Volcanologist Haldor Geyerson noted, the current eruption is quite energetic and the magma's movement indicates potential for further activity. The collaboration between local and international scientists has been crucial. Using satellite imagery, seismic data and on-site observations, they have been able to monitor the eruption's progress and predict potential future events. This combined effort has been instrumental in understanding the eruption's dynamics and mitigating its impact on the population. With the experts' insights providing a clearer picture of the eruption, what are the environmental consequences of this volcanic activity? The environmental impact of the eruption is significant. One primary concern is air quality, particularly due to sulfur dioxide, SO2 emissions. These emissions can cause respiratory problems and other health issues for people living in the affected areas. During the initial days of the eruption, SO2 levels were high enough to prompt evacuations and advisories about air quality. Volcanic gases released during the eruption, including carbon dioxide and water vapor, can contribute to climate change by affecting the atmospheric composition. While the immediate impact is localized, the long-term effects on air quality and climate patterns can be far-reaching. The lava flow itself poses a threat to local ecosystems. As it advances, it destroys vegetation and alters the landscape. The heat from the lava can also cause wildfires, further damaging the environment. One particularly concerning aspect is the potential for the lava to reach the ocean. If the eruption has also led to the temporary closure of the Blue Lagoon, a significant tourist attraction. The area around the lagoon was evacuated as a precaution, but authorities have since conducted risk assessments 
and deemed it safe to reopen. This reopening is crucial for Iceland's tourism industry as the Blue Lagoon is a major draw for visitors. Overall, the environmental impact of the eruption underscores the need for continuous monitoring and preparedness. The Icelandic Meteorological Office and other agencies remain vigilant, providing real-time updates and ensuring public safety through timely advisories. The environmental impact is substantial, but understanding similar past events can provide valuable lessons. How have previous volcanic eruptions shaped responses and preparedness strategies? Stay with us as we explore historical cases and their influence on current practices. The response to the March 2024 volcanic eruption in Iceland has been marked by swift and decisive actions from the government. Immediately after the eruption began, the Civil Protection Department activated comprehensive emergency protocols. This included the rapid issuance of evacuation orders for Grindavík and the Blue Lagoon, ensuring the safety of residents and tourists alike. The Icelandic Meteorological Office, IMO, played a crucial role, continuously monitoring volcanic activity and providing real-time updates to guide emergency responses. And one of the key measures implemented by the government was the establishment of evacuation centers in nearby towns. These centers provided shelter, food, medical care, and psychological support to evacuees. The government coordinated with local municipalities to ensure that transportation was available for those who needed assistance leaving the affected areas. Special attention was given to vulnerable populations, including the elderly and people with disabilities, ensuring their safe and swift evacuation. The government also worked closely with international agencies to enhance disaster response efforts. The European Union's civil protection mechanism was activated, resulting in the dispatch of financial aid, rescue teams, and necessary supplies. The United States Geological Survey, USGS, contributed by providing satellite imagery and data analysis, which helped in monitoring the eruption and predicting potential future activities. This international collaboration ensured that Iceland had access to the best resources and expertise to manage the crisis effectively. In addition to immediate relief efforts, the Icelandic government implemented measures to mitigate the long-term impacts of the eruption. This included financial assistance to affected families, support for rebuilding damaged infrastructure and initiatives to restore local businesses. The government's comprehensive approach aimed to ensure the immediate safety of its citizens and the long-term recovery and resilience of the affected communities. While governmental actions were critical, the community's response was equally significant, showcasing remarkable resilience and solidarity. The eruption brought out the best in Icelandic community spirit. Residents of Grindavík and neighboring areas demonstrated incredible solidarity and resilience. Volunteer groups quickly organized to support those affected by the eruption, providing necessary supplies, emotional support, and even temporary housing. Local businesses played an important role as well, offering resources and services to evacuees. These collective efforts identify the strength and unity of the Icelandic people in times of crisis. One inspiring story is that of Gudmundur Jonsson, a local farmer who opened his home to several families displaced by the eruption. We have to stick together in times like these, Gudmundur said. Helping each other is the Icelandic way, Smithsonian. His actions were echoed by many others in the community who provided food, shelter and support to those in need. Volunteer initiatives were crucial in managing the immediate needs of evacuees. A temporary shelter was set up in a nearby school, equipped with bedding, food and medical supplies. Volunteers worked around the clock to ensure that evacuees were comfortable 
and had access to compulsory services. Local fishermen organized efforts to protect fishing boats and equipment critical to the town's economy, further demonstrating the community's resilience and determination to recover. Local organizations also played a significant role. The Icelandic Red Cross mobilized quickly, providing emergency relief and coordinating volunteer efforts. They set up donation centers where people could contribute food, clothing, and other necessities. The outpouring of support from the community was overwhelming, with many people stepping up to help in any way they could. As the community rallied together, attention also turned to future preparedness to mitigate the impact of such disasters in the future. The March 2024 eruption features the importance of preparedness in managing natural disasters. In response, the Icelandic government, along with local and international experts, has begun implementing lessons learned from this event to improve future disaster readiness. A key initiative is the development of more robust early warning systems. Educational programs have also been established to raise awareness about volcanic hazards and preparedness measures. Schools and community centers now offer regular workshops and drills to educate residents on how to respond during an eruption. These programs emphasize the importance of having an emergency plan, knowing evacuation routes, and understanding the risks associated with volcanic activity. Visuals of these educational programs and emergency drills show students participating in simulated evacuations and learning about the geological processes that cause eruptions. These efforts aim to build a culture of preparedness, ensuring that all residents are equipped with the knowledge and skills needed to stay safe during future volcanic events. The government is also investing in infrastructure improvements to better withstand future eruptions. This includes reinforcing buildings, roads and utilities to make them more resilient to volcanic activity. Additionally, new evacuation routes are being planned and constructed to ensure that residents can quickly and safely leave danger zones if another eruption occurs. Community engagement is a critical component of these preparedness efforts. Authorities are working with local leaders to develop community-specific disaster response plans. These plans involve detailed strategies for communication, resource allocation, and evacuation tailored to the unique needs of each community. By involving residents in the planning process, the government ensures that the plans are practical and effective. The aftermath of the March 2024 eruption has presented numerous challenges for the affected regions. One of the most pressing issues has been dealing with the immediate environmental impact. The lava flow, while not causing significant casualties, has destroyed critical infrastructure, including roads, water pipes, and power lines. The destruction of the Grindavikur Begur Road disrupted transportation and hindered relief efforts. Additionally, the damaged water pipes led to a temporary shortage of hot water and heating for several days, affecting the daily lives of many residents. Another significant challenge has been managing the health risks associated with volcanic glasses. Sulfur dioxide, SO2 emissions from the eruption posed serious respiratory health risks, particularly for vulnerable populations such as children, the elderly, and those with pre-existing respiratory conditions. The Icelandic Meteorological Office issued several air quality warnings, advising residents to stay indoors and use protective masks when necessary. These health advisories were crucial in mitigating the immediate impact of volcanic gases on the population. While addressing immediate challenges is vital, understanding the long-term implications of the eruption is equally important. The long-term environmental impact of the eruption is a major concern for scientists and policymakers. The lava flow has altered the landscape significantly, creating new landforms and changing the course of rivers and streams. 
These changes can have cascading effects on local ecosystems. The new lava fields can disrupt habitats for native plant and animal species, potentially leading to long-term ecology in the region, suggests that the volcanic system remains highly active. Experts warn that the March 2024 eruption may not be an isolated event, but rather part of a series of eruptions. This raises questions about the preparedness of the region for future eruptions and the potential need for ongoing monitoring and research to understand and mitigate the risks. As the long-term environmental impacts are assessed, it is crucial to consider the social and economic implications of the eruption. The economic impact of the eruption has been substantial, particularly for the tourism industry. The temporary closure of the Blue Lagoon, a significant tourist attraction, led to a notable decline in visitor numbers. While the Blue Lagoon has since reopened, the perception of risk associated with volcanic activity has affected tourism across the region. This impact on tourism, a vital sector for Iceland's economy, underscores the need for effective communication strategies to reassure potential visitors about safety measures in place. The eruption has also emphasized the social resilience of the affected communities. The rapid and efficient evacuation efforts demonstrated the effectiveness of existing emergency response plans. The disruption to daily life, including the displacement of residents and the destruction of homes, has had a huge social impact. The psychological effects of the disaster, such as stress and anxiety, are significant and require long-term support and intervention. Community support programs and mental health services have been critical in helping residents cope with the aftermath of the eruption. The focus on future preparedness underscores the importance of learning from past experiences. But what can we learn from other significant volcanic eruptions? Stay connected as we explore similar historical cases and the invaluable lessons they offer for disaster management and resilience. As of now, the volcanic activity in the Reykjanes Peninsula has stabilized, but the region remains under close observation. The Icelandic Meteorological Office, IMO, reports that the eruption's intensity has decreased significantly, reducing the immediate hazard levels. This has allowed for a partial return to normalcy in affected areas such as Grindavik and the Blue Lagoon, which have reopened to visitors after thorough safety assessments. Visuals from the region show a landscape dramatically altered by the eruption. Lava fields now cover large areas where roads and other infrastructure once stood. Protective barriers constructed to divert the lava flow proved effective in saving much of Grindavik's infrastructure, although some roads and water pipelines were destroyed. The quick response and efficient repair work, including the installation of new pipelines, have restored basic services to the town. The recovery process in Grindavik and surrounding areas is well underway. The government has launched extensive rebuilding plans to repair and enhance infrastructure. These efforts include reconstructing roads, reinforcing buildings to withstand future seismic activities, and installing new water and heating pipelines. The construction of temporary shelters has provided immediate relief for displaced residents, while long-term housing solutions are being developed to ensure that all affected families have a safe place to return to. Visuals of these efforts show teams of workers clearing debris, rebuilding roads, and erecting temporary housing structures. The government has also initiated financial assistance programs to support local businesses affected by the eruption. This support is crucial for the economic recovery of the region, which relies heavily on tourism and fishing. The reopening of the Blue Lagoon is a significant step in restoring the area's tourism appeal, drawing visitors back to experience Iceland's unique geothermal wonders. Community involvement has been a cornerstone of the rebuilding efforts. Local volunteers and organizations have played a vital role in providing support and resources 
to those in need. From organizing food drives to helping with reconstruction, the community's resilience and solidarity have been remarkable. This collective effort has not only accelerated the recovery process, but also strengthened community bonds. Regardless of the challenges, the spirit of the Icelandic people remains unbroken. Messages of hope and resilience are evident throughout the community. Local leaders and residents express optimism about the future, emphasizing the lessons learned and the improvements made in disaster preparedness. The community's response to the eruption has demonstrated their capacity to overcome adversity and rebuild stronger than before. Looking ahead, the focus is on long-term recovery and resilience. Plans are in place to enhance early warning systems and improve infrastructure to better withstand future volcanic events. Educational programs are being expanded to raise awareness about volcanic hazards and preparedness among residents and visitors alike. Schools and community centers are conducting regular drills and workshops to ensure everyone knows how to respond during an eruption. Visuals of these initiatives show students participating in emergency drills, community meetings discussing disaster preparedness, and new technology being installed to monitor volcanic activity. These efforts aim to create a culture of preparedness ensuring that the community is better equipped to handle future challenges.